Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi everyone. Well, today I wasn't expecting to stop by the store. In fact, I'd forgotten that I'd asked Sean, our employee, to work today. Um, so I ended up with some spare time. I've asked Josh and Dakota to come down and uh, help me out at the shop here today. I have a project for myself um, to start doing a little bit of work on decorating the top shelf, getting some of the lighting working, uh, cleaning up a little bit, and uh, the guys are going to be working on doing some demo in the back edition, trying to get some of that rotted wood out. Uh, I found out from uh, my Uncle Rick that the um, turnaround time is six to eight weeks to get the type of door installed that I wanted, so unfortunately that's going to take a little too long, so I might have to come up with a plan B, either to frame it and put the door in later, or um, we'll have to maybe just settle for a different type of door in the back. Either way, haven't figured exactly uh, what the deal is going to be there yet, so uh, for now I'm going to head inside the shop and start uh, getting some of my stuff unloaded from the car because, well, as you can see, it's pretty full. And, oh, it looks like uh, Jamie and Brenda were able to get their bed and some of their stuff moved out of the building. Well, look at all the extra space I have to work. The green's looking good. It dried nicely, nice and flat. So I have some ideas for decorating. In our old shop, we had tins that ran along the top. And I think because that shelf is so high, I'll probably use those. They'll be for sale, but they'll mainly be de decoration along the top there. Um, we have all kinds of really cool pennants that I'd like to hang up because I think they always look fantastic when they're hung. So I'm going to do a little bit of decorating. I have to get these little lights that I've got in place. Got to get those wired up and working. So got enough to do and if there's time today I'll start to glue down some of the pennies on the uh, on the till here. Oh so, lots to do while I wait for the guys. But first I have to unload. Let's see. What do I start with? These are things I kind of just brought down for decoration. Lots of tins and that. I'm not going to start moving the stock over until a little later on as we're still renovating, but this will be a start and maybe after this it'll uh, have a little character up there. All right, car is unloaded. I've brought some tins, a little ice cream sign. I've brought in some wiring. All this was in my car. You can only imagine how much work it's going to be when I have to move my whole store. Oh but I'm gonna get cracking. The idea is to put them up along the top there. So I'm gonna start on that. All right, I've been busy for the last little bit here. I got all the wiring in. You can see I've got the light turned on on one of them. Uh, and what I did is I took these antique desk lamps and I fashioned uh, sort of a little fitting on the outside there for them to sit in and they will light up the showcase nicely. And the nice thing is they're adjustable up, down, left, right. So they'll come in pretty handy. Started putting some of my tins up top. Uh, I think I'm going to hang the ice cream sign there. I don't know what I'm going to do with that one yet. So it's just hanging out. And I uh, got the other ones in place. So I'm uh, just going to get some of these other tins up on the top shelf, get them out of the way, and then I can start on the penny counter pretty soon. So today we're probably going to put just a little bit of time. As you can see, I've been working a little bit on getting some wiring up for the shelves, trying to recycle some old desk lamps up top there. It's come along, and I promise not to put too much else up there because you said you have to do something with the shelf store, right? Yeah, just some. Just It'll be quick. Two oh, seconds. Okay. Um, so I was hoping you guys could help me out with the um, the other room because it's pretty gross. And at least today I thought maybe we could do some demo, get a little bit of work done. You up for it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go check it out. Yeah. Oh, have you not been in here, Dakota? I have. Okay. You just forgot how gross I it was? I forgot how bad it was. So I thought today maybe we could get some of these um, boards ripped out because we're going to probably be able to use them. The interior wall? Yeah. With the really sturdy interior wall. Look how much that shakes. Give it a good shake. Oh, yeah. You can probably pull it over onto your bed. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was at one time a Murphy bed gone wrong. A Murphy bed. <laughs> Okay, so Josh has decided to manhandle Wait, that wall. Wait, it's load bearing. No, it is not. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we'll probably tear this stuff out and then uh, use some of the wood to hopefully rebuild a little bit of this door. I like your safety, uh, your safety first approach here. You're just like, yeah, we don't need eyeglasses or gloves or steel-toed whatever. 
Dakota's wearing a top almost this sleeve today. That's more than usual. Yeah, well. He's wearing a top in general. Uh, okay, well that's gone. So, yeah, then maybe, I don't know if any of this can be salvaged here. Not piece, but not so many to step on. I think we're, yeah. This and, is gonna take no time at all. And then, uh, yeah, basically ripping out all that gross stuff around the door. We'll use this wood to shore up that. Yeah. We'll cut that out and we'll be golden. Awesome. Now the original plan I had was to replace this window with the full size door that faces the backyard. That way it would make it a little bit easier for loading and unloading. The challenge is that one addition, that one change that I want to make is going to cost an extra $3,000 to the build. Now the priority more or less is it has to be around making a usable space right now. And um, I was thinking that we already have a double door on the building. It's on the side here. Granted, it's not as easy to load in and out of because I've got some trees in the way, but I have these doors right here on the side of the building, which are very close to the front street for access. So if I can trim these trees back, this could become more of a loading door and access door. And we could maybe open up the inside door uh, so it's wider and I can just access it this way. Um, that would save me a lot of money and I could put that towards something else. Um, so we're just gonna start by reframing the inside while well, the guys are back out there doing demo which i'm sure you'll see on uh, josh's channel i'm going to come inside and start laying out some pennies on my counter this counter was salvaged from the fallen down 100 year old general store now we um, leveled off the edges to make it um, more symmetrical and done a little bit of repair on the wood so that uh, the surface will be nice and flat what I'm going to do is uh, start gluing down pennies pretty much all over the place here. And I thought that'd be kind of a nice uh, nod to the fact that it's a cash desk, a cash wrap. We'll have the old register on top. Um, once the pennies are in place, we'll pour some uh, clear sort of acrylic um, material on top just to make sure it's encased in solid. So I'm going to start by uh, getting my pennies out here. And boy, do I have lots of these guys now. I picked this up the other day. I don't need pennies for years to come. I'm sure I'll have change for ages. I'm laying down some wood glue, essentially to tack them in place and it'll dry clear. And I really only need to do the outer edge all the way around because after that's done, I can fill it all in. When we pour the resin on top, it's gonna hold it all in place. So this is just so I have a, a ridge or something for it to hang on to. And then we're gonna put some resin on and uh, make sure it's nice and sturdy. So I'm just gonna go around and finish gluing the edge pieces on bit by bit, one by one, and there's no particular order. You can get real fancy and you can separate your dark ones from your light and create a, a pattern and do all sorts of things. I am doing this completely random. Um, and I think it's still gonna look really interesting. And it doesn't matter to me whether they're American coins or Canadian coins. Um, as, I mean, our pennies are the same size, so that part matters, but I think it's gonna, Hopefully look really sharp. Admittedly, it doesn't look like much right now, but I think once it's all filled in, it's going to start looking really cool. I love that part. I know. My ants are here <laughs> with Brenda and Jamie, and they are admiring the Lowney's hard candy tin that's right there. Sadly, uh, and it's empty. There's no candy left in it. Uh, you guys have to come see what Josh and Dakota are doing. They're just blissfully working away. They have no idea we're in here just chatting and having a good time. Yeah, that's how it looks. So Dakota's out here wringing out his pants and his, what looks like a very stinky sock. <laughs> Cause you stepped in the hole in the floor. Stepped on the X, X marks the hole. Where it was like, don't step here. Yeah. Uh, gross. Well, how's it, it looks like it's coming along inside. Okay. Um, Josh, I realized there's a whole door. This right next to us in the orange bag, I think is a door with frame. Oh like, yeah? Like a brand new door with frame. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's an interior or exterior though. So we can open it up and have a look. So the roof is rotted right above my head. And before they take all that out, because it's still structural, they are building a brace to hold everything up. So are you guys okay if I show the ants the inside here? Yeah. Is that good? Okay. Laying these pennies down is probably one of the more tedious things I've done. I've been at this for, I kid you not, probably about an hour and I've only got a third of the way done, if that. It's a little discouraging uh, that it takes so long, but you wanna make sure that you get them really close together so that there's no gaps um, or you minimize the gaps. I want it to look half decent. 
not all the way decent, just half decent. So I am kind of taking my time with it. But uh, so far, uh, it's, you know, I've got about four or five dollars down. <laughs> uh, still got a ways to go. I've been pulled away from penny duty to come and uh, chat with Josh and Dakota in the edition here. We'll check and see what's going on. So we don't have a door back here anymore. We got a nice big opening there. And I see a lot of the rotted wood is gone. So the plan is basically just get it all out of there and then... Yeah, so since the gable here sits on the wall, we can actually cut back this and it's still safe. This is stored up with this wall here, which was actually, we used all the L's from the closet thing yeah. that was there, yeah. which is like extra safe. And uh, yeah, we're almost done demoing this part. We started on here. It's a little trickier, but we'll get it out. Uh, okay, so we're missing a wall now. Uh, that was on purpose, I take it? <laughs> that was on purpose. It was rotted. Now, it takes a lot to rot through plywood. It takes even more to rot through OSB because of all the glue. Uh, it was rotted through in this area. You can see where all this mold is and stuff. Yeah, and that, makes... that's really from the roof leaking, or the, well, the leaves on this tree leaking on the roof mm -hmm. and rotting. Maintenance wasn't done. And yeah, and there's no siding on this side, so. That didn't help. So yeah, we decided just to take it all out. It'll be way easier than trying to save the little bits of good wood. So we're gonna take out the rest of this top plate and very top plate, cause that's rotted to basically pulp. So, mm. I mean. Yeah, and you said it's no big deal to frame that back in. Oh, this is easy. Because we have like more than half of the gable supported. We could leave this like this and it'd be fine. It wouldn't pass code, but you could leave <laughs> it and be safe. Right, except that it would rain in here and be nasty. Yeah, it wouldn't be great. And it's raining every day. In fact, it was raining just a couple minutes ago. Yeah, so. so, okay. Well, I'll leave you guys to it, and hopefully we can get that framed in. Um, I don't have any OSB or plywood around, so it might mean a trip to the hardware store. Yeah, that's not a big deal. Okay, awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay, I got my final pennies in, and I don't ever want to see a penny again. I am good for a while. This thing took me uh, literally three hours I guess uh, art doesn't come cheap and that's why it takes a lot of time. But I'm happy with the result. I just have to put some clear on, let it dry and do that a few more times and it should be durable enough to use. First coat of Varathane is on. I have to wait until that dries and I'll do another coat until it's nice and smooth across the top. But I think that looks pretty good. Definitely looks like copper and you can, I love that you can't really tell what it is until you get it close. Today is a really big day. Last night, I left Josh and Dakota to finish up a little bit of work. They're coming back in a few hours, but in an hour's time, I'm going to the bank and the place is going to, hopefully, fingers crossed, officially become mine. I'm going to take a big check down there, which uh, makes me feel like vomiting just a little bit in my mouth because it's a stressful day. <laughs> you know, I've worked so hard to save up that money and to see it all go, but it's at least going into something beautiful and something wonderful and something that's going to hopefully uh, be a, a wonderful part of this neighborhood for years to come. Uh, so I have to look at the long road and not just the, uh, the, the big hit of the, the down payment on the building. So uh, pretty soon I'm going to the bank. That said, um, this has not been an easy road. We are still uh, waiting on zoning approval. Now a lot of you, not a lot, a few of you were saying, well, why'd you go ahead and get the space before you have zoning? Well, I did talk to city council before I applied for zoning. I talked to the neighborhood. Um, I talked to pretty much everybody I needed to talk to, to to assess out whether it should be an issue or not. And so far, everybody's been very receptive and there doesn't seem to be any concerns about me opening up the shop. Plus, it is a retail building after all. Um, it's currently zoned as an apartment building. Um, so there's no issue uh, that we can gather uh, from, from anything there. Um, so I'm going to get back at work on the shop today. Uh, we got someone coming by this morning to do an estimate to see if I can put um, the original style awning on, what that might cost. And I'm going to continue, well, getting stuff ready to start getting these showcases set up, uh, bringing some product over and getting the store um, ready for the big move, which is going to start happening in about a week or two. So, um, lots going on today. So, um, Josh and Dakota should be here soon. Oh, we're gonna get to it and hopefully they'll get that wall done and the door back in. Well, there it is. 
payment for my building. Now to get it off to the lawyers and then uh, officially this place is mine. Josh and Dakota are here. For the next day, they're gonna be working on framing in the new door and fixing the giant hole in the wall. Eventually we'll do siding there, but that'll be another time. And you were at the dump today? Yeah, I had to go to the dump to dump some uh, yeah. my garbage. We don't have garbage pickup, so I have to go to the dump. And somebody recognized you? Yeah, some guy. Hey, Dakota, what was that guy's name? Tyler. Tyler, Tyler, yeah. He recognized you guys from the YouTube. Yeah, there you go. And I noticed either you guys have been doing some serious golfing this morning or what's going on with all these? <laughs> so when I go to the dump, they have a take it or leave it at our dump. Oh, those places are the best. And yeah, so anytime I get something that I can sell or use for art or is useful, like there was this compressor there, I will, I'll pick it up and I'll either sell it, use it for art or whatever. So you're saying somebody threw away all these golf clubs? Yeah. yeah, yeah so they're like brand name clubs. ones too. Um, Slazinger. Oh yeah. I don't golf, so I probably said that wrong. Yeah, no. These are these are all decent. I could sell all of these probably. Mm, hopefully, there's not like a you know a carcass of an animal at the bottom of one of them or something. Because <laughs> why else would you give away a whole bunch of free golf clubs? Well, that's cool. Maybe we'll see like a sculpture out of golf clubs or something. Maybe. Or you'll probably just resell them. I'm probably gonna resell them. <laughs> I brought a couple things in from the store today that um, it was about time I brought a couple items over. Uh, the first thing I'm bringing in is a barrister's bookcase. Yeah, it barely fit in my car, but a barrister's bookcase is a stacking style. They go up in many tiers. They come apart in pieces, which makes it easy to transport. Um, I'm going to take this one apart, put it back inside. This has a really neat base on it with all the filing cabinets. You can see somebody else used it for stuff too. Old bric-a-brac. There's a possibility I'll put more old bric-a-brac in there at some time. Uh, so I'm going to get this guy out and take it over to the shop. And with these, you just stack them piece by piece until eventually... It's all together. Now just to find some proper books and things to put in there. And that piece is just about done. Next up, I've got to cut these boards down. To the right length they're going to become the shelves for inside these showcases i didn't have the original brackets and they're a very special type i did find some on good old ebay that are uh kind of rusty but that's fine but they are a uh, circular mount and then you basically screw this little piece in to make it nice and tight these are exactly what i need for these cases so between what i've got there and the new wood i should be able to get the shelves in the showcases before long just have to measure the inside and cut them down Okay, next for the shelves, I've got them laid out and I'm starting to put some stain on. This one, I've got the top side done and after that dries, I'll do the bottom. This is gonna be the piece that sits inside the showcase. I don't want it to be raw wood because I do want it to look like it's been there a while. So I'm gonna lay this on and with any luck, it'll come out okay. I'm not laying as much of a thick coat as I did on these other shelves because it doesn't need to look as old, but it's turning out pretty good. Shelves are stained. I'm waiting for those to dry. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to have to start getting these all cleaned up. There's tape from the last owner. This was came out of a local shop that had been here for years and years, kind of a curio shop. Um, so we got to clean those counters up before I can use them. But I was also busy doing one other thing. I was getting my old ice cream sign installed. That is a light box sign that I've had kicking around the store. And I thought it would be a nice tie-in because this new top cone sign behind me, well, that's been in the building pretty much uh, since the 1940s at when this was what they call a milk bar or soda fountain. And uh, yeah, I thought it would be nice. I can almost replicate the picture exactly with what was here before to what we have now. All right, how's it going over here? Pretty good. Oh, this floor was beat. Oh yeah, I had this piece here, brought it from home. Guess where I got it from? Where? Potter's house? Yes. <laughs> ah, a little piece of the Potter's house. So it just happened to be the same depth as these old floorboards. This is from like, I don't know what, It was ro it's uh, rounded over on one end. But anyways, it just works perfect. And it's fur, and this is probably fur, I'm not sure. It smells like fur when I cut it, so I think it's fur. So it's nice that it matches anyways. Framing is looking good. Oh yeah, yeah. It went together really, 
Easy. Pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. So after you get the floor basically ready, then the door gets ready. Yeah, we ready put in the door. door. And this is what I did for you. Just because I don't know, and you don't know either exactly, what you're going to do about having a big door. I framed this. I uh, totally framed this so that we could have a big door here in the future. In the future, to. okay. So this header is massive. So for now, we'll put in the small, the normal Yeah, one. you can put in a normal door and then to knock it out, it's going to be easy. Awesome, okay. If you ever want to. Yeah, good idea. So all that rotted, disgusting, gross, really bad wood is now gone. And it was, there wasn't much left in this corner that was good, was there? It was all pretty bad. All of it was bad. It was like, it's... Yeah, I see that. It's soggy. Soggy, gross, rotted. A lot of it actually is not rotted. It's just so waterlogged. Obviously the black stuff. Yeah, but still rotted. we don't want waterlogged wood in there anyway. <laughs> no. I should get a burn pit. I should have brought the one from the potter's house. I could have put my kid to use. Yeah, Stephen was, loves cat. He took that his. That was actually a cool fire uh, pit. It was awesome. Yeah, it sold at the auction. No surprise there. Well, the guys are behind me getting the siding, well, the sheeting put on the outside. I have to figure out uh, what to do with the window. We have um, a window that was left over from the old construction they did around 2005. It's essentially brand new. The problem is with the header, it's going to be almost a floor to ceiling window. Now, I don't mind that idea. <laughs> Um, it might look a little weird though, so we're kind of considering what to do here. This is the current window. This is where I was thinking about putting kind of a back door at one point. That idea has shifted due to budget constraints mainly. Um, so we're going to put a new side door on. That's probably going to happen today. But we have this beautiful window right over here. But it is, uh, it's basically brand new. And, but it's an up and down, like it slides up and down like they would have in the old days, like that. The problem is, when we put it in place, you have to have a header that basically that space above it, this one isn't done right. It has to be, well, more or less like that one where it's built out. So if I put it on right here, it means the window is going to start there and go all the way down to about there. Um, so I don't know. I don't mind the idea of having lots of light coming in and a floor to ceiling window. It might be an interesting feature. It might look a little weird. Um, but this is, this is what we're thinking of right now. I had to run out. Um, Josh and Dakota are still working at the, uh, at the store right now. And we're going to go back again tomorrow and do a little bit more work. But I had uh, a lady I had to go visit who had some items for sale. And when those calls come in, you have to follow up. Otherwise, you might miss out on something cool. Um, so once I get back uh, to my house here, I'll pull over and show you guys some of the stuff that I got. Um, not a huge haul today, but some cool things. So what did I run out and buy today uh, when I should probably be at the store working? Well, a couple ukuleles, one a little bit older one. Mahalo. Nice condition. Everybody loves a ukulele. It's one of the happiest instruments I can think of. That and, uh, I don't know, maybe like a mouth harp or something. <laughs> Whimsical. There's another one there. Uh, let's see. There were a couple. I'm going to come back to this one in a second. This is kind of cool. A nice little tin. And people like advertising tins. That one has the old Eaton's building. Sadly, that's been torn down in Winnipeg. And that's where they put their new arena. I was in that building before they knocked it down. That was pretty cool. A couple old English brass candlestick holders. Got those. Um, there was some cute little toys in there too. This German tin wind-up. You wind it up and the cars and the little buses go all around. What's nice about this one is it does have the original box still. It's a German wind-up. Oh look, it's starting to go. Barely had to touch it. So you know it works, that's good. Um, there was a little matchbox Volkswagen early probably 1970s i'd say 1974 yeah it's kind of a cool psychedelic paint scheme on it um ogden tobacco card set these are all a lot of times it's uh, either historic people or movie stars if you're lucky you'd get the um you know sports players and you know you get like some really cool early baseball card i don't think there's anything like that in here these ones are all mainly uh stars of the time and soldiers and important people but a neat little book and it's pretty cool that it has the uh original tobacco uh, album that you would have picked up too 
this was an, an early game. I just kind of like the uh, the cover. Of, it's a board game. Acquire High Adventure in the High World of Finance. Um, that's a 1968, it looks like. I just thought it had really cool kind of Mad Men looking graphics on it. This very early edition of Alice in Wonderland, of course, famous book. This is, um, you know, would have been a, a kid's book. Nice little drawing in there. If that drawing is an indication of the age of the book, and I looked earlier, this one is not dated. But to me, it's, you know, that's got a 1920s sort of feel to it. Teens or 20s. We'll have to do a little bit more research and see when this one was published. I have not done that yet. But early editions of popular books can be quite collectible, so I did not want to leave it behind. A Coca-Cola tray. And the, uh, the item that I wanted to show you... I don't normally buy royal stuff, and this is uh, the coronation of the king. But th what's cool about this, and the reason why I bought this, is that he's uh, the royal that decided he'd rather marry an American um, rather than uh, be king, so he abdicated. And then, of course, King George, Queen Elizabeth's dad, became king. Uh, they made the movie The King's Speech. Um, Edward was sort of the um, the one that they thought would be king, and uh, no, he decided not. So this is kind of a an early coronation piece that was given out, and then, boy, they probably wouldn't have been on the shelves very long because, uh, yeah, that was quite the controversial thing that happened there. Um, so really cool piece. So a few interesting little items. Um, it was worth running out for. So notice this morning that my dump pin has been dropped off. Uh, it's been raining like crazy the past week here, so the ground was too soft for them to bring it in. This is where I wanted it, was in the yard, uh, because we've been accessing the property through this little trail here. Sadly, it got dropped here. But I should be able to fit a fair amount of stuff in there. Hans is going to come out tomorrow and help me with some demo. We'll get that thing filled up in a hurry, I'm sure. And it looks like the guys got the new window in place doesn't look so bad from this side. We were a little unsure about how a larger window would look on the outside of the building, but uh, it actually doesn't look too bad at all, especially once we get some siding back on there. I'm going to go inside and see what it looks like from that angle. And there it is. So the old window is gone. They've got the header in place. It's all in there and built up nice. And it is almost floor to ceiling, so when you walk up to it, you really get a nice view of the backyard. Yeah, it's not too bad actually, I kind of like it. I had to run over to Home Depot to pick up some supplies, needed a new brush and a scraper. Uh, thankfully they've got everything that I need here. Uh, this morning I'm going to repaint the fascia above the door in the front, um, trying to match the off-white color that's there so it can be ready for sign painting which is supposed to happen at some point over this weekend. Uh, before that happens, of course, I have to paint it and let it dry. Oh, that's one of my missions today. It's going to be a big job uh, getting that ready because the paint is starting to dry out, so I'll have to do some scraping, but i um, looking forward to getting that painted and ready, and I'm sure once I get the sign up there, it's going to start really looking like a shop again. And this is what I'm going to be painting today. The fascia, the top of the building. Uh, I've picked a color that's going to match the trim, so I'm not introducing a fourth color, uh, but the reason I wanted to go a little bit lighter was so that uh, when we do the script, the lettering, it'll be more visible. Painting directly on the blue, I don't think it'd be as easy to see. Uh, but before I get cracking, I gotta start scraping all the loose paint off. Any loose paint I've gotta scrape off, and you can see that it is not adhering very well to this wood. I don't know if they used a primer when they put it down. Uh, if they did, it didn't stick very well. Some of it's okay. But anything that's loose like that, perhaps where a little wood got in the, got some moisture in it, uh, I've got to take all that right down before I can uh, reprime and do anything with it. And there's spots literally all over. So I'm going to go over and get the uh, patches of paint scraped down so that the uh, new paint will adhere much better. Okay, well, I've got most of the paint scraped off now. I think I'm just about ready to start painting. But as I'm here working away, I had a couple of folks pop up and they're not local, at least not anymore. <laughs> so you guys came from Banbury, England. That's correct, yes. And you watched the show out that way, do you? Yeah, yes. originally I started watching uh, on YouTube search. Uh, it was called The Hoarder's House. Yep. And then it chose The Potter's House. I thought, because well, this is before I knew about Curiosity Inc. And there's uh, basically a random YouTube thing like they always do on YouTube. 
And uh, then I saw, and I just saw, and it rolled, it snowballed from there. Really. It rolled together, and now here yeah. you are. Now you don't seem to have a British or English accent. Uh, so where are you from no. originally? Originally, I'm from Vancouver. Vancouver, okay. Yeah, but I spent more than half my life in Edmonton. Wow, and so you've and, come uh, back to visit? Uh, yeah, um, I met my husband online, and we were married in Edmonton. And uh, now we live in England, but I'm trying to convince him that we should move back to Edmonton. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, in Banbury is kind of a, is it a, a smaller community or? It's very small town. Yeah. You okay. can basically walk around the whole thing in, in a matter of a few hours. Okay. Well, you know, if you're ambitious enough, you could do the same here. You might be a little worn out, but. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot the Canadian imports. Uh, oh yeah, so you bought a uh, the, the tubes. tubes. Now I keep yes. forgetting like American and Canadian import as well. Or going import a Harley case on the on the album sleeves. Ours are more papery. Yeah, so we have a little bit different so, uh, album. Uh, and you collect records, do you? Yeah, yes. I collect records. I haven't got many because we moved a few times and I've actually uh, stopped a couple of times and gone back to the collections. But I thought I got to buy something from Curiosity Inc. Oh well, they <laughs> did. I'm so glad. Well, I'm glad you guys came out for a visit today. Well, we appreciate you uh, letting us come have a look. Oh, of yeah. course, my pleasure. Okay. Yeah, that shouldn't just uh, redo the switch and keep the lights where they are and yep. just get sure everything working in that. It should, yeah, it shouldn't be. Uh, do that few hours. And, oh, awesome. Maybe, well, I, that's good to hear. One or two hundred bucks worth of materials. Maybe, oh, sweet. Yeah, that's, whatever. Just that's probably worth it. So. Okay, great. Well, that's super appreciated. So, awesome. So yeah, if it works out for Monday, just let me know and we'll be here. So. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you a text for sure. Sounds good. We'll see you, Jerry. Right. Thanks, Alex. Okay. Yeah, bye. <laughs> So I'm up there painting, very top of the ladder, like you know, a story and a half up, and a little fly goes boop, right in my eyeball. And you can't like shake all around and everything, so I had to try and very gently free and release the fly from my eyeball without falling off that ladder. But uh, it is almost done. I've got half of it, uh, well, a little bit more than half done. Uh, I'm gonna finish up the rest of it here, and then I'll do a second coat, and hopefully that'll last us. Uh, the last time that they put the paint up, it lasted 15 years. I'll be happy if I get another 15 years out of this. So I stepped away from painting for a second. Come see how the guys are doing. Uh, you're shoring that up there. That's going to be for the door frame? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, part of it. It's just to make sure that this is secure. Or the header is nice and right. sturdy? Nice and secure, right. And I see you've been working on getting some of the wood replaced on the floor where we've had some rot. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not perfect, but it'll do. Uh, window I saw it this morning looked good. You're just getting the tie back on. And if somebody wants to see the exact how to's of how Josh did. I have to go to Josh's channel. That would and, be sick. Yeah, go check his channel out and you can watch the how to install a window. It's looking pretty sharp. Saying I don't mind it being as tall as it is. No? No, I know you're not you're not sold on it, but I like it. It'll look good. And I had some special guests show up. My kids! Well, at least uh, two out of three. Steven's not feeling well today, so he's kind of uh, hanging out. But we are discussing right now what to do with the tree situation back here. So, Melissa, this tree is going to go. Yeah. This one behind me. Um, I need your opinion, though. Okay. These are all really overgrown. I'm And it's obscuring the path here. I'm thinking either just take this one tree out that's by the path and then trim everything back. Or, and, or just take out... The caragana is pretty overgrown. Oh, that's at the very front. The yeah, very and front you can't trim it down too much because it's just going to be what branches. Kind of I don't know. Aunt Carrie, do you know what kind of tree this is? It almost looks like pin cherries, but it doesn't have the right leaves. I think actually this is a um, wonderful unicorn tree that attracts unicorns. Yes. Oh, it's a unicorn yes. tree. Yes. Mmm, that's where they are. Before. Now, welcome to the inside of one of these 100-year-old showcases. It has probably not been cleaned out in a very long time. I'm going to get busy because uh, we're going to Windex, vacuum, and then start putting the old shelves in that I built the other day. Here goes nothing. <laughs> old green felt has seen better days. It is probably original to the cabinet. Um, I'm not overly worried about it because it's going to get completely filled with stock. Generally, I put stuff down on the bottom to make it look interesting anyway, so I'm going to leave it for now. I'll address that later. But what I do have to do today is Windex the glass and remove the old shelf brackets that are in here because they're not quite right, sadly. I do buy new ones. Um, so that's what's next for me. 
Sadly, my old brackets did not work. I could not uh, get the shelves to fit inside. They were just incompatible. So I went out and bought some new ones. Uh, now the trick is to get these things in place. Now these are adjustable. For a retail setting, they're gonna be really handy, um, but uh, they're a little newer than I'd like. On the other hand, you won't really see them. They're gonna be covered by stock. There's gonna be other things in there. So they're just a backdrop. They're just meant to hold up the shelf and that's gonna be fine by me. So I am getting these in position. I'm gonna get them screwed in place and then I can get the shelf in. The glass on these cabinets is generally pretty original and you can tell new glass versus old glass by looking at how wavy it is. So see the wavy reflection there? That is imperfect. They didn't have the same type of tools and machinery to get glassed the way we have it now. So these little waves in the line tell me that this glass is probably pretty correct. And that's a good way to tell if something you're looking at, like an old clock has the original glass in it by looking to see if it has the wavy lines in the glass. If it does, it's probably vintage or antique glass. If it's completely flat and smooth like modern glass, well, that's probably just what it is, more modern. There we go. Brackets are in, one shelf firmly in place. Now we go to the other side. This other showcase here is so big, I've actually climbed inside of it <laughs> so that I can get the screws out from the old brackets. It just seemed easier. I could probably do a really convincing mime in a box routine in here because I'm actually trapped inside of a glass box. <laughs> a few more brackets to go and I'll have this guy ready for the shelf. So back over in the addition, taking a little break from the showcases for now because I saw the guys wrapping up the cable. So that must mean that uh, they're pretty well done for today. Mm -hmm. We'll be back at it again soon, but so far we've accomplished a few things. Well, the rotted wood has been completely removed from this area, and uh, it was pretty gross, hey guys? Oh uh, yeah, it was, it was gross, very wet. But not moldy. Very, not, not, the, the only mold was just in this little area, that we, which we got rid of. So it's all gone, looking yeah. fresh. Um, new plywood, new OSB on the other side of that wall. Yeah. And you papered it too, I think, right? No, not this. That, that's, what, that's what will happen before we do the... Before we do the siding? Yeah, all the siding. We'll just paper the whole thing. Okay. Window behind us went in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it went in pretty good, I would say. And it is uh, pretty well a floor-to-ceiling window, which I was saying kind of reminds me of the old schoolhouses that they had back in the teens, 20s. They would do big floor-to-ceiling windows. And then right. for a while in the 60s, they took windows out of schools. And they're like, no, no distracting those children. But look, I want to be distracted at work and look out at the backyard. So that's pretty cool. It's all framed in, and I saw you were doing that video on your channel too. So you uh, put some foam in around it? Yeah, yeah. it's like a vapor barrier and insulation sort of thing. We like, like put every little method of keeping moisture. moisture out into this, basically. Well, for right now, it's probably keeping the moisture in because we still have to contend with a roof that leaks um, this roof is getting replaced in about a week and five days, about a week and a half, a little under a week and a half, the roof gets replaced. So we're basically doing all the prep work. So when the guys come, uh, there's a lot less for them to do. Tomorrow, um, we're going to get back at it and do some more. But for this video, that is probably about it for now. Um, I'm going to finish up on my showcases. But guys, thank you very much for all the hard work. It's already feeling so much better in here. Yeah. The, the wall being gone is a big problem. Yeah, the wall, that's the biggest thing, yeah. And yeah, it makes it so nice and spacious in here and really adds, I mean, this is what another five, 550 square feet or so that is gonna add to my um, store. And that, that's a big deal when you have a retail space. So it's paramount, it's crucial, one might say, to get this place looking good. And we ran into, actually he ran into us, a fellow named Jeremy who watches the channel. So if you're watching Jeremy, hello. Um, he came over and said uh, he's a master electrician. He wants to help us out with the electrical in this area. So he's gonna be coming by on Monday to get all the wiring hooked up in this side, tied into the panel. He's gonna get all the uh, permits and everything for that. Nice to have somebody who watches your channel who's a master electrician, especially when you need an electrician like this. So uh, Sparky, as they're called, is gonna be coming on Monday to help us out with the electrical. And pretty soon we'll have power and lights in this little addition. Then it's gonna be a matter of just finishing up and making it look fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna go finish up the shelves on the other side. And uh, then after that, we'll call it a day. Well, that's it for today's video. Pretty happy with the work that was accomplished. Got the uh, lights in place on the counters. The shelf is done, got some tins up there too. The penny counter is pretty well done, really. Um, and I'll tell you why I have the till turn around the other way. 
The till is turned around the other way because we're going to merchandise things out of it. So um, sometimes you can buy chocolate coins or little gemstones and stuff. So instead of this being turned around on our side, we're gonna have it open so the customers can actually shop out of it. I thought that'd be kind of a fun addition to the counter, but really liking the effect that this got and that um, modified polyurethane did a great job keeping it all together and looking fantastic. Showcases are cleaned on the inside. Uh, shelves are in place and product can start going on um, really soon actually. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting that process started and getting some items in there. I also hung my uh, guitar racks so that we can get a bunch of guitars all hung here on the side. I know that's not authentic 200 years ago, but really this is still a store. So I still have to sell things and I thought that'd be a nice spot for guitars. A couple paintings, the one that Robert Bailey did um, that we purchased, that was meant for Peter Jackson. That's right, the Peter Jackson. It's now hanging in our store, will be on display. And of course, I just finished hanging the one of Mary that was made by Josh. Um, that's not something that's for sale, but we did want to display it so people could come have a look at it. So stay tuned next episode as we start tearing through the, well, finish tearing through the addition, start getting the siding and the floor cleared out. Um, Hans is coming and he's gonna help us out with getting some of the trees taken down and uh, cleaning up the yard. Well, I start working on getting some fixtures in place on this side of the store. That's red, not pink. Somebody called it a pink wall the other day. It's red. Um, we have to get some other shelves put in on that side. Uh, electrician is going to be coming. So lots more work happening. We're still planning on um, hopefully for September being open, but there's still lots to do before then. But for now, I say good night. Store is coming along nicely. Um, and oh yeah, I almost forgot before I completely sign off here that I was busy this morning painting and got the uh, fascia done at the top. So I matched that color to the trim around the windows and that is where the sign's gonna be. I'm thinking something like Curiosity Inc, General Merchant up there. Um, that might go up as uh, early as the next couple days or so, but that'll be next video. We'll get some of the painting done. But for now, I think that's a wrap. So thanks so much for watching this week's episode, guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. You can follow us online at curiosityedmonton.ca on Facebook and Instagram under Curiosity Inc. Uh, make sure to check out Josh and Dakota too. Uh, they have their own Instagram and YouTube channel. So thanks very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.